This week on Jerusalem Dateline, Israel becomes the first country to administer a third vaccine dose against COVID-19. Will it be effective? And a look at how Israel regained the land the world calls the West Bank, but the Bible calls Judea and Samaria. And archaeologists uncover Jerusalem's ancient city wall from 3,000 years ago. All this and more this week on Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett announced Israel will be the first country in the world to begin a third COVID vaccination. The decision was based on considerable research and analysis, as well as the rise in risk of the Delta variant wave. Israel has already vaccinated 2,000 immunosuppressed people with a third dose with no severe adverse events. And now we're rolling out a national third dose campaign. The decision comes as cases of the so-called Delta variant have increased, even though the majority of Israelis have received two doses of the Pfizer vaccine. Given the rise in new cases, Bennett on July 22nd delivered this message to non-vaccinated Israelis. Dear citizens, those who refuse vaccines are endangering their health, those around them, and the freedom of every Israeli citizen. They're endangering our freedom to work, the freedom of our children to learn, and the freedom to hold celebrations with the family. Bennett warned that beginning August 8th, unvaccinated Israelis will be barred from any event with more than 100 people unless they bring a negative COVID test done at their expense. Following Bennett's decision, dozens of Israelis protested outside his home. The idea of our prime minister to force all, all of us to be vaccinated as soon as possible, it's, it's, it doesn't give us the right to, of our body. I need to decide whether I want to be vaccinated or not. It's my right. It's my basic right. And they don't care about us. Not at all. Even though Israel has led the world in vaccinations, new COVID cases have risen dramatically in the past month. Just a few weeks ago, Israel had lifted almost all of its COVID restrictions. Because of the rise in cases, few groups have been allowed into Israel. But rabbis from North America visited recently on a mission to support the Jewish state, as well as meet with Israel's new leaders and understand the new developments in the country. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl has that story. These rabbis and Jewish educational leaders have been to Israel many times, but this is their first trip back in 18 months since the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Organized by the Mizrahi Religious Zionists of America, they believe God promised the land of Israel, including Judea and Samaria, to the Jewish people. We represent all of our communities in America, and we felt it was important as leaders, you know, to come as a group, and to be able to, to bring messages back to our communities about what's going on here. But we haven't had the opportunity to visit our homeland, our ancestral homeland, the state of Israel. It is a solidarity mission, and I'm happy to come to be with the people of Israel. Well, the experience this time has been fascinating because we've had the opportunity to meet with political leadership, with rabbinic leadership, to see places we never saw before, even though all of us have been to Israel so many times. During COVID, Israel finally elected a new government, one that includes factions who don't support Israel's claim over the biblical heartland of Judea and Samaria, also known as the Occupied West Bank. The Israeli claim to that land is a subject of particular interest to the group, which met several Knesset members representing a wide range of opinions. Meeting people is the key. Encountering relationships is everything. Reading the media, understanding that this government was certainly going to be different than previous governments. Rabbi Ari Rakoff, executive vice president of Mizrahi Religious Zionists of America, said both Prime Minister Naftali Bennett and President Isaac Herzog were educated in religious Zionist schools in the U.S. We feel like we really had a chance during this trip to just understand the issues better and have a dialogue with them. What happens, happens. That's in God's hands. We pray for the governments. It was wonderful to have an open dialogue with so many people and who were just so passionate. This is true democracy. Change is always complicated and it can very often be very good. And we're hoping that we'll be able to overcome the complications and reach the point of good with the new government. 
They visited Israeli-Gaza border communities targeted by more than 4,000 rockets during the 11-day Israel-Hamas war in May, and traveled to the city of Lod, where 11 synagogues were burned during the worst violence between Jews and Arabs in Israel in decades. Lode was very painful because it was a community which everyone had such great dreams of, how Arabs and Israelis could live together in peace, and how we thought they were living together in peace, and all of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, violence erupted that was so reminiscent of the violence pre-state and the violence of 1929. When you spoke to the residents, you sensed the trauma that the people are going through. So I actually asked one of the residents, so what's the plan going forward? And she said, I don't know. CBN News accompanied the group on their trip through the biblical heartland of Samaria. They met with Davidi Benzion, deputy head of the Samaria Regional Council. We're in a complicated time in Judea and Samaria, and specifically in Samaria. The strong connection between us to our brothers, to our friends abroad, gave us a lot of power and energy to work hard in this very important mission, the Zionian mission to, to make more and more settlement in Shomron today. Ben Sion says they face two challenges today, security and maintaining White House support like they had under the previous administration. Ben Sion wants this group to be ambassadors. It is very important to explain to the world why it's so critical for Israel that we will be strong. If we will not be strong enough here, the Arabs will attack all Israel exactly like that's happened in Gaza against Ashdod, Sderot and Ashkelon. And what will the religious Zionists tell their own communities back home? We're here with solidarity. We're here to connect and to bring that message home to everyone that as soon as they can, this should be their first trip back to Israel, back home. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Samaria. Up next, a look at developments inside Iran and what it means for the Middle East. For a limited time, you can get five of CBN's critically acclaimed documentaries. Experience the rebirth of the modern state of Israel. A historic bond between the Jewish people and the land of Israel cannot be broken. Relive the battle for Jerusalem in the Six-Day War. Jerusalem is yours forever. Discover how Israeli volunteers are changing the world. When people need us, we volunteer and we come and help. Explore the world of Israeli technological innovation. We're people of dreams. God gives us dreams. And that's really the roots, I think, of, of much of our innovation. And understand the biggest land dispute in history. Many Palestinian Arabs claim that the Jews stole Arab land. But is that the real story? This exclusive Israel DVD collection can be yours for a gift of $40 or more. Call now or go online to get your Israel DVD bundle today. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. The Bible tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. In CBN's free guide, 10 Ways You Can Pray for Israel, you'll learn spiritual lessons from Israel's patriarchs, prophets, and beloved New Testament leaders, while also discovering how you can pray for Israel today. Get your free copy. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash pray for Israel. Last week, we reported on an historic visit of Iranians here to Israel. We talked about the aftermath of that visit and what's going on inside Iran right now with Eli Kohanim, senior fellow at the Center for Security Policy. Eli Kohanim, thanks for joining us on Jerusalem Dateline. Great to be with you. Great to be with you, Chris. Last week, there was really a historic visit of uh, some Iranians, expats that came here. Tell me what happened during the trip and sort of what was the uh, impact of it. So, Chris, this was a delegation of Iranian Muslims coming for the first time to Israel after the 1979 Islamic Revolution in Iran. 
And they came because they wanted to express solidarity with Israel and the Jewish people following the Gaza conflict, which they understand is an Iranian proxy. Hamas is an Iranian proxy. Palestinian Islamic Jihad is an Iranian proxy. These terror groups are attacking Israel on behalf of the Iranian regime. And they felt that this was the moment for them to come to Israel and show their rejection of this hatred that the regime espouses. A lot of people may think of Iran just in terms of the regime, but it's really not like that, is it? And do these men represent the, another point of view of Iran? They wanted the Israeli people to understand that the Iranian people are not the same thing as the Iranian regime. And they told me they wanted to come to Israel and face to face tell Israelis that they love Israel. And they really support the Jewish people in the Jewish people's uh, desire for a sovereign state and to have a Jewish state of Israel. What impact did it have on them? They couldn't believe that Israelis were warmly embracing them, were welcoming them into their country and into their homes. We went to an IDF uh, army base, and these gentlemen for the first time met an Israeli soldier. A couple of the uh, delegation were people who were born after the 1979 revolution, and so they were raised under the propaganda of the Iranian regime. What they told me was that growing up, they were told that Israeli soldiers were ruthless, soulless, killing machines with the most advanced technology. And so this was the image that they were told about Israeli soldiers. They come on this army base, they meet these 19-year-old Israeli men and women who are being so kind to them, who would cut up fruits and vegetables for this visit, who were talking to them, you know, just buddy-buddy, and also telling them a little bit about the Hezbollah threats because we were on the border of Lebanon mm -hmm. at the time. And so these Iranians just couldn't believe that despite all that the regime does to really threaten the Jewish state, that the Israeli soldiers and Israeli citizens warmly embrace them and welcome them into their country. They also talked about what's called the Cyrus Accords. It was really new to me. Tell us what the Cyrus Accords are. Well, they um, wanted to pay tribute to one of the great leaders of ancient Persia, Cyrus the Great, who at the time gave the Jews the permission and the encouragement to rebuild the second temple here in Jerusalem. And so the Persian Jewish relationship is an ancient one that spans thousands of years. And so they want to rekindle that ancient relationship and bring the Jewish people and the Persian, the now Iranian people back together under the banner of a Cyrus Accords peace deal. So this comes on the heels of the Abraham Accords. If you go back two or three years, a lot of people wouldn't even have expected this to even happen. Are you feeling the same thing, that it really could happen, something like the Cyrus Accords? We think it could happen under a free Iran. Certainly this current regime, which again espouses hatred towards America, constantly says death to America, death to Israel. This is not the regime that's going to make peace with the Israeli government. But today, right now, as we're speaking, Chris, the Iranian people are out on the streets. They're demonstrating against the regime. They're shouting, death to Khamenei, who is the supreme leader in Iran. And they're also chanting, not for Gaza, not for Lebanon, but for Iran, which means that they're rejecting the Iranian government spending the country's resources to fund these terror, these terror operations against Israel. And so, um, there is, you know, I think certainly a hope for a brighter future when the Iranian people are free of this regime and can make peace with all of their neighboring countries. Well, we hope that freedom does come to the Iranian people. Eli Kohenim, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Chris. Up next, a look at the land the world calls the West Bank, but others call Israel's biblical heartland. It is the most important archaeological site. Nevertheless, it has never been excavated. An almost impossible task. Temple Mount was the largest religious compound in the ancient world. It is the most politicized piece of real estate in the world. Leads to an improbable find. There is an ancient road, also 2,000 years old. That is the building which is referred to in the New Testament that is confirming the stories of the Bible. Where did Jesus walk? There's no question he walked on these steps. You can see it. There's no way to refute that. They existed. They walked here. They talked here. See the evidence left by an ancient witness. He lived there. He saw it. He knew the details. And it's like the crown of our discoveries. May cause a rewriting of the history of the Temple Mount. And discover what was written in stone, secrets of the temple. 
Get your copy today for a gift of any dollar amount. Available now. Here, we're committed to a heritage of rigorous scholarship dating back over a thousand years. And to a faith tradition dating back a thousand more. This is how we create a culture of inquiry where no topic is off limits. And a culture of hope. Anything's possible! It's Christian leadership. And it's changing the world for the better. It's higher learning. It's greater knowing. It's what makes us whole. It's what makes us Regent. The Jewish founders of Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream say they are backing the company's decision to boycott Israeli communities in the West Bank or Judea and Samaria while still supporting the Jewish state. Trouble erupted when the company's board voted to boycott the sale of its product in the areas that Israel regained as part of the 1967 Six-Day War. Here's a story we did on the 50th anniversary of that war about that disputed territory. Much of the world calls the playgrounds these children enjoy an obstacle to peace. That's because they're in Judea and Samaria, otherwise known as the West Bank. Are we witnessing prophecy unfolding right now after the 1967 war? Absolutely. It says yeah. that the sound of children playing in the streets will be heard once again. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you hear it, you see it. I spoke with former Shiloh Mayor David Rubin in Shiloh, overlooking the road of the patriarchs, the highway Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would have traveled on. Rubin told me the Six-Day War was pivotal in Israel's history. It opened the door for Jewish people to redeem the biblical heartland after 2,000 years in exile. Places like Jerusalem, home of two consecutive Jewish temples, Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus, Hebron, where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their wives are buried, and Shiloh, where the tabernacle stood for 369 years, they all came back into Israeli hands. So you see 67, the Six Day War, just like a pivot, a prophetic pivot in, in time and history? Oh, clearly, clearly. It says in the book of Ezekiel, the dry bones being put back together again. Israel was being put back together again as a nation. If we don't have a right to Shiloh, and we don't have a right to Shechem, and we don't have a right to Bethel and Jericho, we definitely don't have a right to Tel Aviv. But not everyone saw the opportunity. It took until 1978 for Shiloh to be established, just above the site where the tabernacle had rested. There were Israelis who were coming here trying to set up tents on the lower hills of Shiloh. And the Israeli prime minister, who was looking over his shoulder at the American president, uh, kept, kept sending in the army to chase them away. Just months after the Six-Day War, Israelis established the first Jewish community in Judea, about 35 miles south of Shiloh at Kifar Etzion. Jews lived there before Israel's independence war in 1948 and were either evacuated or massacred by the Jordanians. When this group of orphans, of those who were murdered, notified the Israeli government that if you don't give us the permit, we will go on without a permit. The government really couldn't stand up against orphans of those who were murdered. And so Kvaritzion was established. Rabbi Eliezer Waldman was one of those who helped establish the next community in ancient Hebron. There was always a Jewish community in Hebron, even, even during the 2,000 years of exile until 1929, when the Arabs massacred the Jewish community here. A small group of families rented a hotel in Hebron for the Passover Seder. Essentially, they never left. 
And I believe then almost the entire population of Israel was with us. Even more than a half a year after the Six Day War, the spirits were high among almost the entire population. Thousands of Israeli pilgrims enter the old city of Jerusalem for solemn religious ceremonies. Which... All of the media was with us. Yeah, I even remember headlines, passages of the prophets hovering in the air. After 50 years, some 430,000 Israelis live in more than 200 communities in Judea and Samaria. The number jumps to 750,000 if Eastern Jerusalem neighborhoods are included. The growth here has been so tremendous. And as we gotten through those 50 years after the Six Day War and we're looking to the future, so we have this vision of a, a booming Shiloh once again. 50 years ago, what would this place have looked like? Barren desert. There was nothing. It was just hills of weeds and thorns. This road will lead to a new school for the growing population. There are 8,000 residents in the Shiloh Township. More than 2,000 of them are children who study here in Shiloh. We learn that when Israel is not in the land, that the land lays barren. The land doesn't give its fruit. And now the land of Israel is giving of its fruit because Israel is back. And the most important fruit is what you see right here, all these children here. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Shiloh in Samaria. Still ahead, archaeologists uncovered Jerusalem's ancient city wall from 3,000 years ago. You touch something or you walk on something or you lean against something that you know somebody did the same thing 2,600 years ago. So it's, uh, it's emotional. Thank you for watching Jerusalem Dayline. We're committed to providing you with unbiased reporting from the Holy Land. Through weekly broadcasts, podcasts, and online media, our vision is to reach millions around the globe with the true story of what's happening in Israel and the Middle East, all from a biblical and prophetic perspective. This is a big vision and is only made possible by the generous support of people like you. Call us toll free at 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash Jerusalem Dateline and make a donation that will help spread the light of truth about Israel throughout the world. Chris and Joy have gone back in time, but I do not know where. From Super Bowl. Let me tell you how this trouble started. Hi. Pastor Aaron invited Chris to be group leader at the very next Bible study meeting. I didn't volunteer to run the meeting. That's when everything went kaplooey. But the heroes of my Hollow Nine games are more today, you know. So if you Bible call me, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. <laughs> Super Bowl. The Superbook left with only Chris and Joy. Whoa! Join the Superbook Club and get Superbook Heroes of the Bible, plus two copies to share with others. All for your gift of only $25. It seems Superbook has dropped me and Chris back into this past adventure with the past you, Gizmo. This mission calls for our very best spies. Reporting for duty, sir. Let us have the men who are staying at your house. You mean them? Don't play games with me, Rahab. Thought I knew what it takes to be a hero. Follow God. For that is heroic. Superbook Club members, free streaming for seasons one through five is now available. Spice up your summer with these delicious international recipes. Introducing Operation Blessings free light and lean recipe book. It's filled with flavors your whole family will enjoy. Plus, you'll learn about Operation Blessings work, bringing nutritious food, clean water, and medical care to millions in need. Call 1-800-730-BLESS or go to ob.org slash summer to get your free light and lean recipe book right now. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Archaeologists excavating in Jerusalem have uncovered part of the ancient city wall from almost 3,000 years ago. The timing also came just days before the Jewish fast 
marking the destruction of both the first and second Jewish temples. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl shows us why that's a key part of the discovery. Finding this part of the wall in the City of David archaeological site provides a key to understanding the first temple era of ancient Jerusalem. In the 60s, famous British archaeologist Kathleen Kenyon, just a few meters north of here, uncovered a 30-meter section of the same wall. Then she claimed already this is the wall of Jerusalem during the time period. Then, according to Dr. Vuko Savovich, about a decade later, Israeli archaeologist Yigal Shilo found another section further south, but a piece of the puzzle remained missing. For a number of years, we attempted to find additional sections of this wall, and we couldn't. So much so that we started doubting the existence of this wall. That brings us to this discovery of two more sections, which clears up the mystery. So now we can conclusively say that, yes, the city of David, at least, had one massive wall that surrounded the city of David. The wall behind me would have protected the ancient city of Jerusalem for about 200 years, from the 8th century B.C. until about 587 B.C. In 600 B.C., the Babylonians besieged the city, which is described in the book of 2 Kings. The Bible says Nebuzaradan came to Jerusalem. He set fire to the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem, every important building he burned down. The whole Babylonian army under the commander of the Imperial Guard broke down the walls around Jerusalem. Archaeologists found evidence of that burning just inside the wall. This part apparently wasn't destroyed, possibly because of the steep hill below it. In addition to the wall, archaeologists found artifacts indicating what life was like in the kingdom of Judah in those days. And we found right here where I stand a bulla of a person called Tzaphan, which is abbreviation of Tzfania, Tzfania, which we find in the Bible as well. Just a few centimeters away, and we found a Babylonian stamp seal. The jar handles were stamped with rosettes and circles and with Lamelech belonging to the king. You find a really beautiful wall in so many ways. You touch something or you walk on something or you lean against something that you know somebody did the same thing 2,600 years ago. So it's, uh, it's emotional. For now, the excavation continues as archaeologists try to understand how the nearby Gihon Spring and other sites fit together. Julie Stahl, CBN News, the City of David, Jerusalem. That's one more discovery validating the connection of the Jewish people here in Jerusalem and the account of the Bible. Well, that's all for this edition. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And you can also access CBN content through our CBN News and other CBN apps. And don't forget to sign up for our email blast so you can continue to receive all of our exciting CBN content. I'm Chris Mitchell. We'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline.